What is going on everyone? Today we're going to be testing and reviewing this NextPow V311 OBD2 scanner. It should work for any vehicle from 1996 because that's when OBD2 started to be mandatory up until current. This is their revised version that they came out with in 2021. The scanner is relatively cheap and it has a four star or higher rating everywhere I've found it. So people seem to have good things to say about it and think that it does a good job. So let's dive into it a little bit here and then we'll go out hook up to the Jeep and uh, just kind of test it out a little bit. For a cheaper scanner, it comes with a lot of useful tools. You can read, erase, clear uh, fault codes. You can view freeze frame data, vehicle information, battery voltage, I uh, believe it also has DTC lookups, which is your diagnostic trouble code. So you may be able to look up certain fault codes uh, right on the scanner, like troubleshooting help. In some instances, it also supplies real-time data for speed, uh, load value calculation, engine coolant temp, and all that information as well. Again, it is going to depend on application and what's supported by your vehicle. This unit features a backlit LCD display, so you can see stuff pretty easily. And it supports seven different languages, including German, Dutch, English, Italian, Spanish, French, and Chinese. I will put a product link down in the video description if anyone is interested in this unit and they want to buy it. Currently, it's going for $25 to $30, depending on where you buy it, which is pretty darn good considering even just a couple years back to get a scan tool that could do something like this, you're going to pay well over $100, maybe even $200. So definitely seems to be good bang for the buck here. So now that we've kind of gone over the features of this unit, let's go ahead, go out to the Jeep. I don't have any active engine lights or codes on it because it is a 2021 with only 3,000 miles on it. So we're not going to see any active or live trouble codes or fault codes, but uh, we can still run through the operations, kind of see what kind of data we can view and just kind of play around with it a little bit. All right, so this is actually my first time unboxing this. Comes with a little user manual, which I'm sure comes in handy sometimes. There is a little blue tab right here. You can pull the screen protector off. I'm actually gonna leave mine on for right now. Uh, when it starts peeling, then I'll pull it off. But here is the connector for the OBD2. You can see it's kind of a trapezoid shape. The top uh, line is a little bit longer than the bottom. You're gonna wanna locate the OBD2 port in your vehicle. Every vehicle can be slightly different. Ford likes to put them kind of towards the center for some reason sometimes. Uh, most other vehicles, you're gonna kind of go right underneath where the driver sits. And as you can see, mine is located right here. It has the same matching trapezoid shape. So we're just gonna match and plug it in the correct way. I like to gently push and wiggle. And we're already powering up here. Typically you'll wanna turn the ignition to the on or run position you don't want to start the vehicle but just tap the ignition all right now this is also my first time using this so bear with me um you can use just kind of the arrows here you got your exit enter arrow let's hit the battery once see what happens we have 12.1 volts just sitting here with the vehicle off you can hit dtc and look at that it automatically tries to connect you don't have to go select uh, what vehicle you have and everything I'm sure it doesn't always auto detect. Again, it probably depends on the vehicle. Yeah, so it did not auto detect to mine, so I'm gonna go do it myself. But real quick, let's just look through the settings. As you, the one you have highlighted will be black on the screen, so I assume this is like a settings right here. So let's hit enter into that. You can pick your language, your unit of measurement. We want English, at least I do. No metric. <laughs> and english for me go back all right so we have a search right here what's that about okay cool so you can literally you can literally search you can type you can type in like a code number and look it up that's pretty cool you just kind of use the arrow pads to select if it's a p code a b code a u or a c as you can see here there's lots of different ones so the down arrow is what makes the number change let's say you had a p o and then to go to the next digit you'll hit up and then you'll hit down again to pick let's let's just make one up like a p o three o four and I'll hit enter cylinder four misfire 
So a PO304 is a cylinder four misfire. I don't actually have that. And you know, if you scan the vehicle, it'll probably say cylinder four misfire after the PO304 anyways, but it is just kind of a cool function. So we're gonna go back now, try to connect to the vehicle again, go to the OBD and hit enter. And there we go. I, I had my ignition on accessory the first time, not the run position. That's why I wasn't connecting. You do have to have it on the run position. Uh, all right, so now we can read codes, clear codes, view freeze frame timer. Let's check out some things here. Let's go real time curve. Of course, I'm not moving, so it's not gonna give me the speed there or the engine value calculated load because the engine's not running. But we can look at coolant temp. And it says it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and it actually gives you a live graph. If the engine was running, you would see it slowly increasing as temp increased. And it really is about 30 degrees out right now, so that's pretty accurate. Engine RPM, zero, because it's not running. Again, just really cool that it gives you a live graph on a cheaper scanner like this. Uh, we'll go back, let's try our data stream. So here it will give you all sorts of information depending again this everything everything the scanner can display is going to be heavily dependent on the vehicle and what features it supports but here you can look at sensor voltage uh, lots of different sensor voltages and some pressures for like fuel and stuff like that your map and your math uh, rpms all that stuff let's go to vehicle info oh you can get your vin course that's just in the door tag anyway but this was a little more convenient if i'm being honest check out the i am readiness so you can kind of reset and view faults during single drive cycles or since the last time you've cleared the codes you can view freeze frame data so you can manually freeze frame uh, on that live data screen, you can manually freeze frame that to go back and look at the data at a later time and also view any sort of snapshot that the vehicle uh, freeze framed during a fault code event. You know to read codes. Again, I have no codes. No codes in module. To erase codes, you would go down to erase codes. Vehicle has to be turned off or engine off with the ignition in the run position, just like we are now. You select yes. Hit yes, and it will clear the codes. Mine said fail just because there are no codes anyways to clear. But that's pretty much the basic operation, guys. And then when you're done, you'll just switch the ignition of your vehicle off. And then just carefully unplug, slowly pull and wiggle. Uh, another note, when you're plugging in, sometimes these are not mounted the greatest. As you can see, mine moves around a bit. If you're going to plug this in, make sure that it's not pushing this out of its mount. Uh, if you if you plug it in and it pushes that out, you're not gonna get a good connection and you might not be able to connect. So if you're having connection issues, make sure you're in the run position with the ignition and make sure this is fully plugged in. I recommend putting your hand behind uh, the other portion when you plug it in just to be sure. So that is going to wrap up this quick overview and test of the NextPow OBD2 scanner, the V311 2021 version. Um, again, I think it is a pretty good bang for the buck for what it can do and for the price. Again, I will post a product link in the video description where you can get this if you want. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you hit that like button. Comment down below with any questions. Check out my other videos here on YouTube. Check me out on all the socials. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.